There are two types of electrochemical cells, electrolytic cells and galvanic, also called voltaic cells. Look at these pictures and compare the energy conversion between the two. Compare the components between them and what do you think the uses would be of each? Pause until you've done this yourself. An electrolytic cell involves a non-spontaneous chemical reaction. Energy has to be inputted from outside and that's done in the form of electrical energy and that causes a chemical reaction to happen even though that chemical reaction wouldn't happen by itself. It's a non-spontaneous chemical reaction. So the electrical energy is converted into chemical energy. In contrast, in a voltaic or galvanic cell, you have a spontaneous chemical reaction. So the chemicals react by themselves. And as they do so, their chemical energy that they had is converted into electrical energy because we have wires completing an external circuit between the points where the reactions are spontaneously happening. So what components do we need? In an electrolytic cell we need a battery. There it is because it needs to force the reaction to happen, it needs to input the electrical energy. We need wires of the external circuit so that the battery can pump electrons to and from the electrodes. We need electrodes. There they are. And we need an electrolyte. This here is the electrolyte. What is an electrolyte? Electrolyte is a solution which can conduct electricity. How do these components compare to those in a galvanic cell? Well, we also need electrodes. We also need an electrolyte. Well, in this case, we actually need two electrolytes. And if we place the two electrolytes in two different different containers as in this first picture. We need what we call a salt bridge to complete the circuit. It is possible actually to put the electrodes and electrolyte in one container and then a salt bridge isn't needed. And then we need an external circuit. But notice there's no battery that we need. This is the battery. A voltaic cell is a battery so we don't need a battery as well. Now what are the uses of these? The use of an electrolytic cell is to refine substances to electroplate meaning to cover something with a certain chemical so like this key here seems to be being covered with maybe copper yeah it would be copper because here we have a blue copper ion solution. Copper ions are blue when they're in solution and the electrolytic reaction is causing copper ions to change into copper atoms and this is happening all the way along the key, plating the key in copper. And then it's important also for isolating elements because I mean we can see here as well we're isolating the element copper from the copper chloride it might be or copper sulfate perhaps solutions. I think it would probably rather be copper sulfate because copper sulfate is blue, copper chloride is actually green. What's the use of a galvanic cell? It's used as a battery because it makes electricity from chemicals, which is what a battery does. Lots of terms that you need to know. Oxidation, the loss of electrons rise in oxidation number. And here are some examples. We see that ions oxidation number changes from 0 to plus 2. It's risen. Chloride's oxidation number changes from minus 1 up to zero. Reduction is the gain of electrons which is associated with a drop in oxidation number. The copper ion here is changed to copper atom. Oxidation number changes from plus two. The charge is two plus. The oxidation number plus two and it's dropped to zero in the copper metal. Bromine is a covalently bonded molecule consisting of two bromine atoms covalently bonded with one another and the shared electron pair shared between the two bromine atoms is shared perfectly equally because the electronegativity difference between bromine and bromine is obviously zero and so the electrons are not shifted towards nor away from either bromine. The oxidation number is zero but after it has gained electrons the oxidation number is minus one because one electron has been gained, shifted towards in other words, and so we see that the oxidation number has dropped been reduced. What is an electrode? An electrode is a conducting material which connects 
metallic these are the metallic parts of the circuit with the non-metallic in other words the ionic parts of the circuit the electrolyte of the circuit and that's the next term we look at electrolyte what is an electrolyte it's a solution or an ionic liquid what is the difference between a liquid and a solution a liquid is pure it consists only of that substance but it has sufficient kinetic energy for the particles to flow over one another in a fluid form that's why it's a liquid rather than a solid whereas a solution is a mixture it doesn't consist only of that substance it consists of that substance and water and the water has surrounded if it's an ionic solution the ions so for example if we looked at sodium chloride liquid which is molten sodium chloride only consists of sodium ions and chloride ions but those would not be held in a crystal lattice as in the case of solid sodium chloride but rather the ions would flow over one another and sodium chloride solution is actually sodium ions surrounded by water and chloride ions surrounded by water where water molecules have hydrated have pulled apart the crystal lattice of the sodium chloride solid and so now this is a solution a mixture of sodium ions chloride ions and water molecules an anode is the electrode where oxidation happens and a cathode where reduction happens where we can remember that is that anode begins with a vowel just as oxidation does and cathode begins with a consonant just as reduction does.